Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Um, thank you, Abhishek, for not saying things not, not too nasty. Um, and yes, I have known Abhishek for that long, and it was in that time that I worked with uh, Jeffrey Bauer uh, when he came to us to, uh, for, for a project, and it's been a wonderful relationship ever since. Um, this afternoon, after looking at the future in the morning, I think it's going to be more like a sort of history lesson. Um, I was asked to speak about um, what it is that has inspired the contemporary style of design in Sri Lanka. A lot of people come to Sri Lanka and kind of go who and how about the place. I think it's really because it's got a gorgeous landscape, it's a very beautiful place to live in, great climate. But the architecture too, I think, <coughs> helps in a, a sort of way to do that. So what I'm doing this afternoon is to sort of trace the history of Sri Lankan design and the reasons for what, uh, for, for, and perhaps the reasons for what, uh, what it's become, and uh, then show you some of the work that we do at the moment, which seems to have been influenced by that. Um, some years ago, in the sort of uh, mid, late 90s and the beginning of the 21st century, in which all of us have had the privilege of living in, there was a series of books that were published um, that were called Chic Simple. They seemed to suggest to us that we should have a simpler way of life, live beautifully, but with a sort of economy of means. For us in Sri Lanka, though, this business of living with an economy of means for a doctor in the southern province using very simple materials that one had to work with. Most designers had to rely on homegrown solutions and locally made materials to realize their ambitions. So there was no playing around with glass, steel and concrete like the rest of the world was doing at the time. So it was a kind of enforced use of local materials but somehow to realize the modern sensibilities that they might have had. So terracotta, cement, wood and of course an exceedingly beautiful landscape which they brought into play in a lot of their work uh, plus a highly skilled set of craftsmen uh, was part of the palette that they had to actually work with. So those are some of the things that um, the early designers worked with and particularly in architecture we have two very important characters, Minette de Silva who was educated at the JJ school in Bombay and later at the Architectural Association in London, attended various CM conferences, met Le Cubusier, who famously used to write to her calling her my little bird had admonished her to look at her own past for architectural solutions to her modern problems in Sri Lanka. While her work is overtly modernist, as you can see from those period pictures from the 1950s, um, she somehow began to incorporate local crafts and building techniques, laterite blocks, traditional weaving, metalwork, and traditional motifs interpreted in other materials were part of her own. And somehow all this was incorporated into a very open plan, very modernist buildings uh, of the 1950s and the 1960s. Um, the other person of importance, of course, is my old guru, Jeffrey Bauer, who returned from the AA and working with his firm, Edward Reed and Begg, went on to become perhaps the most influential architect Sri Lanka has produced. His work is based on modern planning and sensibility, but with a forced use of local construction materials, techniques and execution. Here you see the Benthoda Beach Hotel, which uses those. The Neptune Hotel of about 1970. The House for Ina de Silva, which is really one of his most iconic houses. Unfortunately, it has now been demolished, uh, being rebuilt by the Lunuganga Trust. Um, and uh, it, was, it was really one of those houses that brought together the idea of modernity and, 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 and tradition uh, in, in, in contemporary Sri Lanka. Uh, and this house for a doctor, Kole Sitch de Silva, who uh, lived down in Gaul. All of these buildings, built in the 1960s, was very, were very, very influential in the work that happened in Sri Lanka soon after that. So once again, uh, this very simple palette of materials of, of white plaster, terracotta tiles, were used to perhaps clothe contemporary uh, spaces and contemporary uh, uh, plans. Most for not being able to experiment with concrete and glass as the others were doing in the rest of the world at the time. It was a sort of postmodernism going beyond modernism earlier than they wanted to. 
And uh, there were three very important figures in this process. And they were uh, Barbara Sanzoni, Nina De Silva, and the gentleman from Madison and all great artists and craftspeople in their own right. With Barbara Sansoni, she almost reinvented Sri Lankan fabric for us. She pioneered new design in the handloom industry and with dramatic new use of colors and so on, and inspired, all inspired by the modern movement. And with her work, Sri Lankans began to dress differently in the rest of, uh, the rest of Sri Lanka. She was also interested in buildings, and she began to draw old buildings, and those are very simple buildings. With Ina De Silva, she had a uh, slightly different take on it. She pioneered the resurrection of several traditional crafts, initiated the production of contemporary style batiks in Sri Lanka, and all this became integrated into a lot of the work that Bauer and other uh, and, and, and other contemporaries were doing. And also the Andrew Hotel uh, as you as you went from below and the magnificent flags that she designed for Parliament uh, in 1982. This work was used often by Jeff Bauer as centerpieces for a lot of his work. He was a great draftsman with a wonderful skill and ability to draw. And these skills again were put in the um, That's a mural that he did at a, in a cow shed in Jeffrey's garden in Lungaga. And of course, the magnificent handrail of the Lighthouse Hotel in the south of Sri Lanka. Uh, all these, of course, used by architects as centerpieces of the most popular work. And in this particular case, the Triton Hotel's drawings which were done in 1982, um, are now being redrawn by another artist because Lucky is now 74 and is a generation of Sri Lankan architects. And that perhaps includes me. Um, so I'll, I'll take you rather quickly through some very simple, very, some projects that we have been doing, which uses a similar palette of materials, <coughs> very simple palette of terracotta tiles, polished cement, terrazzo, stone, and timber. Uh, in creating something that's slightly different to Mara, perhaps, but in the same sort of spirit. Um, because the last bits of Jeffrey Bauer's work, of course, was much more modern and had a tremendous influence on the work that uh, I will be showing you. Of course, the palette changes, we start using slightly different materials, but the spirit sort of remains the same, where simplicity is really about what it is. Um, this is the cinnamon leaves garden that remains and brings the uh, sea and the, and the food into the room. Again, art is used quite sparingly, but all the same as a focal point in a lot of the work. These are a series of sculptures done with old boats uh, that have been placed in the lobby. Um, the idea of the garden coming into the house. This is the sitting room with uh, gardens on either side and um, an open dining area overlooking the garden on very tight urban side um, and then going up into the uh, upper levels allowing for a screen of the wall to try and create an ambience um, that is as uh, cool as possible I suppose and a lot of crafts from Sri Lanka and from uh, that part of India This was, this was a house that was built as a simple concrete framework in uh, the hills around Kandy. Um, and of course, it was for someone who collected a whole lot of beautiful things uh, and uh, for uh, all the magical things and for looking out at uh, the magnificent landscape, even from the toilets. Uh, another sort of interest that I've always had is the conservation of old houses. And once again, a similar approach of uh, using very simple materials and very simple finishes has been the way I have approached it. Uh, at, the Dutch, at the Dutch house, the old house from about 1712, uh, that we renovated uh, almost 12 years ago, uh, we used the same simple pattern of materials, but somehow to bring a sense of what the, uh, again, a simpler, lighter set of materials restoring it to what it might have been. Um, but the idea here was to try and create 
small home first, it's run now as a hotel, uh, but the, the issue was about toilets, and in this case, uh, we made the toilets into cupboards, the, one, the, the headboard of the bed is actually a toilet, uh, which is freestanding. Our own house is becomes uh, a passion, and uh, in, in this case, this is my own house, which I've experimented with uh, architectural ideas for a long time. We find that it's, it's, it's quite eclectic in its interior, it doesn't sort of speak to a particular style. And the interior really is about the memories that I have filled into it. An interior without memory for me is somehow a dead one. And in the end, whatever one puts in it, is also the people that who come into it that actually do matter. And that of course is the end of a party that I might have had at some stage or other. And that's really, for me, what interiors and architecture is about, to contain people and become, uh, and, and, they, and, and, and how houses themselves get transformed simply by themselves. Spaces transform themselves with time. They bring joy through the way um, a ray of sunshine might pass or catch an object or a surface. They bring peace to the spirit when providing cool shade on a hot afternoon or uplifting in, as it glows in a brilliant sunset. But most of all, they transform with people. I believe architecture and interiors that follow, that allow for the celebration of all that is good in life, is one that really can transform itself and contain all the activities of all those people throughout uh, a, a, a given day. And to celebrate life. Let's leave buildings when they finish them, but buildings have their own lives which we can't control. Uh, which, are what, which is what it is, and if your building can stand up to that, um, then I suppose that's what a good building or a good interior is all about. Thank you very much.
one can always use how the education markets, the Emirates, Sofia, Boha, all of them have actually taken inspiration from yes. the Joffrey Baba. But I see they have a completely different approach to it. And I, I mean, I really admire that. And I, and I, of course, I admire the uh, How do you see that? I, 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 think, I, I, think, I, I think I think I think I think I think the inspiration is really about setting off at some point. But whatever you do has to, and whatever I do, has to fit within the economies of scale, the economies of the market that you're working with. And as I said before, Sri Lanka and the market in which I work has remained a particular level of uh, economic, uh, let's say, sustenance and ability to do things and so on. And you work within that, that, that framework. You work within the opportunities that you have. Um, and while inspiration can then take you to other levels, certainly Boha has done brilliantly well, and there's always, uh, and you can always see that there's a lot of inspiration from the relationships of inside spaces, to outside, and so on, and then they carry it up on the third and fourth floor, which I think is brilliant. And that's wonderful, because that's the opportunity that they have got, and they're actually being able to be smart and push it away forever. Each person does work within the context in which they're working. And I, I work within the context that I work, and that's... So all these figures? Yeah. Do they have a cheap part? I mean, in terms of... They're not expensive either. They're very expensive, so there's nothing like because... What yeah, they're... they're, 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 they're no, I, 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 I don't think one is trying to carry it to start. That's, that's what you're getting into. No, not at all. They're done because they, they, uh, they fit within a particular economy. Um, and they fit within a particular uh, framework. So if you look at the square foot, Price of a lot of the buildings that we've done, they're much cheaper than anything that you have mentioned a minute ago. They're much, much cheaper. They're talking about, I mean, there was a very interesting incident that we had a friend of ours who was out there uh, with another one of my groups, Sergeant Hendon. We were in Singapore and took us to see a very beautiful house. It was extremely beautiful, beautifully designed and inspired by Jeffrey Bauer and everything else. What was incredible about that, that the fees he got for that particular project. And if you have those opportunities, yes, you could do them. And so that's what we're talking about. Are we accepted on the opportunity? Can you work within those opportunities? That's the economy of means. If you have the money, that's great. And then every architect is not, architects are not unable to think out of the box. They always do. It's you. But you also must be thinking within the economy in which you're working, how much money do you have? So if you make that very simple statement, all the work that the architect who published about it and done in 20 years, the cost of the project, not his fees, was the fee that was got for a vacation home in Singapore. The big hotel that I've done, the cost of that hotel was no more than 5,000 Chicago per square. Right? We're talking about 50 dollars a square. That's far, far less than anything else that I've done. So I think that's very important to the market. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. 
So I tried to create an interior of a house, not as I wanted, but I take cues from what people already have in their, in their places. I always, I spoke to you about the idea of memory. The moment you lose memory, and that's what happens with a lot of contemporary interiors, you lose out.